Good morning, everyone. What a joyful and beautiful, amazing day we gather together, worship our God, especially today we celebrate and remember Jesus' transfiguration that transformed into his true glory. And in his presence of true glory, we gather together, worship our God with wonderful music, different style of wonderful music. And now I want to show you today with Cindy how we pass God's peace. We will show you first. The peace of Christ be with, be, be with you and also with you. Please rise as you are able and we pass God's peace like this. The peace of Christ be with you and also with you. And turn to your neighbors and pass God's peace. The peace of Christ be with you. And be with you and also with you. <laughs> Please remain standing and we join in the opening prayer. Let us pray together. Great God of dazzling beauty and overshadowing majesty, in Jesus Christ, your beloved Son, we glimpse the image of your glory. Teach us to listen to him so that we may hear your voice and follow your holy way through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen.
Please be seated. Good morning. It is now time for the children to come up. As a congregation sings, he's got the whole world in his hands. This isn't what part of what I planned today, but I've got, I want you guys to turn and look at the floor up here. Do you guys see the purple and green on the floor? Mm. Pretty amazing. Yeah, it's from the sun, come, but there's no purple in those lights. It's like a Mardi Gras miracle. <laughs> there's a blue and red, yeah, come together to make that purple. Okay, so it's a, such an exciting day today. We have jazz music. It's Mardi Gras. We're going to have some jambalaya after the service. But the first question, and I need audience participation on this. First question we have to get out of the way. Raise your hand if you're for the 49ers. Ooh, just a few. Raise your hand if you're for the Chiefs. Oh, okay. So that's done. We can move on, right? Okay. But Mardi Gras today, right? So we're here to celebrate, and there's different ways to celebrate. Uh, can you guys look at me? There's different ways to celebrate all, I know I'm normally sitting there, all over, right? So if you were like in Pensacola, Florida, you might be eating a moon pie right now. Yeah. Yes, okay, awesome. Um, if you were in Mobile, Alabama, you might be going to a masquerade party or ball. Anybody know what a masquerade ball would be? like mass, kind of like a Halloween costume party, kind of like that. If you were in San Francisco, you would be dancing or could be dancing the samba. Do we have anybody out there who's ever danced the samba? I bet there are. Yeah, there's a few people out who have done that. And if you're in New Orleans, you might be having something like jambalaya and you might be wearing these beads. Let me think. Um, green is for faith. Purple is for justice. And gold is for power. And so those are kind of the col yeah, those are the colors that uh, they represent, all those things represent. But um, the other thing you might do is eat a king's cake. And a king's cake is kind of a light, fluffy cake, and they put purple, green, and gold on it, because those are the color for Mardi Gras. But I have a problem. I mixed up my ingredients. I, kn I know, right? <laughs> She whips her hat around and says, that's a problem. It is a problem to mix up your ingredients. So I thought maybe you guys could help me figure this out. So can you come on up here? So I, my recipe calls for baking soda. But I had baking powder and baking soda, and I measured it out and then forgot which one was which. They kind of look the same, right? Yeah. So I know we can do it science experiment to determine which one is which, because a baking soda will make my cake all nice and fluffy, but if I just put baking powder in it, I might end up with a flat cake. And who wants a flat cake? No one. No one, okay. So, so let, let's take a look here. I'm gonna do this one first, okay? Can you see? Do you see, Mason? See, it's like a, they, they look really similar. They almost look like flour or, they look a little different. Yeah, they don't. That was kind of crumbly. More crumbly. Yeah, like they don't smell like like a. I'm wafting here. They don't smell like anything. Okay, let's put it in this solution here and see what happens. You guys ready? Here we go. <laughs> okay. Ah. Anything? Ah. Bubbles. There's a few bubbles there. Bubbles. Okay. Bubbles. Okay. Now I know baking soda is gonna make my cake a lot fluffier, right, than baking powder. Well, that's starting to bubble a little bit more. Let's try this one. You guys watching? Come on over. It is, yeah, it doesn't taste like milk though. Here we go, let's try this one. Whoa, wait, 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 there's a problem. Oh. So that, so that's what happens, right? So which one should, which one's a baking soda? That yeah, that one. So now I know the one that I had in the purple is a baking soda. 
Yeah, and that's the one that we're going to get to make my cake all nice and fluffy. All right. Well, that, that worked. Thank you, guys. Now I know which one to use. Okay. But here's the idea, right? And this gets to the actual reason we're here today, and that's to celebrate Jesus' transformation. And you're going to learn about that because it's kind of like a Mardi, Mardi Gras Day miracle like this floor was here, right? Seeing those purple and green on the floor. And you know what? Sometimes when things get hard or tough, we doubt our faith. And you know who else doubted their faith sometimes? Jesus' disciples. I know. And we're human too, so sometimes we have doubts in our life. But Jesus, in today's story, shows his disciples who he really is. Hmm. And you're going to learn about that in the gospel and in Sunday school. But first, yes. let's pray. Yes, let's pray. Ready? Dear God, help us to trust in your word and keep our faith in you. Even when we might not have evidence that we can't feel or see. Thank you for Jesus. In his name we pray, amen. Let's go to Sunday school. Do you have another one? No. Okay, just checking. Good morning, everyone. Happy Mardi Gras and happy Super Bowl Sunday. Uh, if you want to follow along with your Bibles, we're going to be reading from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, 3 through 6. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing clearly the light of gospel of the glory of Christ who is the image of God. 
For we do not proclaim ourselves, we proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as your slaves for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who said, light will shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ.
please stand as you are all able to for the gospel reading. From the book of Mark, chapter 9, verses 2 through 9. Six days later, Jesus took him with him, Peter and James and John, and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling bright, such as no one on earth could brighten them. And there appeared to them Elijah and Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us set up three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. The word of God for the people of God.
seated. What a perfect day that we celebrate the glory of God in Jesus' face when we stand on this threshold between the season of Epiphany and the season of Lent. We are standing on this very special day, special moment, and special time. And I'm so grateful for our musicians celebrating this important time all together. Our spirits rose together. Please join me in a prayer. God of grace and majesty and victory, also God of compassion, knowing our low times, not only high times, God who meets us in the valleys, not, on, not, on, not just the mountaintops, and guide us, your eternal light, Feed our hearts and spirits, our church, family, and community with your eternal hope and love. Thank you, God. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let me tell you first about Moses. When Moses came down from the mountain Sinai with tablets of Ten Commandments in his hands, his face was bright and shining because he was there on the mountaintop with God for several days. His face reflected God's glory. If we are Christians, we need to reflect God's mercy, God's glory. And Moses did that. His face reflected God's glory. And people asked him, to put a veil on his face because they couldn't handle, they couldn't handle seeing God's glory with their human eyes. And they asked Moses to put a veil on his face. It was out of world, out of ordinary brightness. They just couldn't see it. So Moses put a veil on his face for a while until the light eventually faded away whenever he talked and met people to, the, to talk to the people. In today's reading from 2 Corinthians, Paul talks about another out of ordinary, out of, out of world glory, the glory of Christ witnessed in the gospel and a veil on people's minds preventing them from seeing their glory in the gospel. Paul says the gospel is veiled to the people, unbelievers, because the God of this world have put a veil on their eyes. Here, Paul talks about the glory of Christ and the glory of God of this world. Everyone, both believers and non-believers, see glory. But it's up to what kind of glory we see. The glory of Christ or the glory of the God of this world, meaning all shiny and comforting things of the world. Until we intentionally, intentionally put a veil on our minds to see the, we just put a veil intention, to see the glory of the world, we cannot see the glory of Christ. It's up to us when for what we put a veil on our minds and eyes. We choose which one to see and which one we seek for. Today is the last Sunday of the season of Epiphany before we start Lenten season on Ash Wednesday. This Wednesday is Ash Wednesday. Today we celebrate Mardi Gras tradition, which is a Fat Tuesday in French. Mardi Gras is a fancy word for Fat Tuesday. Mardi Gras festivals focus on feasting and excess, emphasizing the glory of the world. Just before the fasting of the Christian Lenten season, emphasizing the glory of Christ. Occurring on the day before Ash Wednesday, Mardi Gras, 
Fat Tuesday is usually a professional celebration. That's why today our choir and the worship leaders had a, profession, a procession today. Masked or veiled and customed participants revel in rituals of chaos that include reversals of the social order, men dress as women, women as men, the poor as rich, the rich as poor, old as young and young as old, and a clown as a king and a king as a clown. So for us, it is the day we reverse. We reverse the glory of the world to the glory of Christ by mocking the glory of the God of this world with bees, hats, and masks, pretending we are clowns or kings. Hopefully, hopefully today, when we prepare to start the Lenten season on Ash Wednesday coming soon, we take off the veil from our minds and eyes, realizing how silly the glory of the world, how silly the glory of the God of the world, this world, and recognize and accept the glory of Christ witnessed in the gospel. The most glorious of glory of Jesus is in today's gospel reading, which we call Jesus' transfiguration. It was Mardi Gras on the mountaintop with a dazzling bright light and a sound from heaven. After Jesus called his disciples, healed the sick, exercised demons, taught and fed people, he knew his time of suffering and death was coming. But still people's eyes were veiled from seeing who Jesus truly was, even after all his miracles among them. People were still confused between the glory of this world and the glory of Christ, or just mix them together, hoping that Jesus was their king. He would bring, who would bring them victory, comfort, and prosperity through more miracles. They kept asking Jesus more miracles and more miracles, but Jesus knew that his glory would be his death on the cross and resurrection from the death on the cross, not on the king's throne in this world. Before his suffering and passion happened, he took his disciples, three disciples, to a high mountaintop and transfigured, revealing his true identity. Paul says that the glory of Christ is the image of God. As the people in Moses' time did, the three disciples of Jesus who saw his transfiguration, which was out of world, out of ordinary dazzling and bright light and glory in him, didn't know what to say or what to do. They were terrified and amazed Peter mumbled that he wanted to build three tents, one for Moses, one for Elijah, and for, one for Jesus. Peter wanted to stay in the mountaintop Mardi Gras party, but suddenly a voice from a cloud spoke. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. No matter how dazzling and awesome the Mardi Gras party was there on the mountaintop, the disciples needed to listen to Jesus rather than trying to keep the party going on. In the presence of the glory of God, there is nothing to be done by human words or human deeds. They just needed to listen to Jesus while watching his glory. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was the person who understood their mountaintop experiences so well. In his last speech in Memphis, on the day before he was assassinated, he said that we've got some difficult days ahead. 
But it really doesn't matter with me anymore now because I have been to the mountaintop and I don't mind. Like anybody, I would like to live a long life. Longevity has its place. But I'm not concerned about that now. I just want to listen to and do God's will. And God has allowed me to go up to the mountain and I have, I have seen, I have looked over and I have seen the promised land. That was Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s speech the day before he was assassinated. People believe that Martin Luther King Jr. knew his time of death was coming soon, very soon, because he received so many death threats already, so many. But he said his coming death didn't matter to him because he had been to the mountaintop and, and he saw God's glory. He just wanted to listen to and do God's will for God's people. Today we celebrate Mardi Gras, but it doesn't last forever. Ash Wednesday is close to behind. Only a split second separates them. Peter doesn't want to go down into the valley of the ordinary life of pain and suffering. There is death and self-denial at the foot of the mountain. But to listen to Jesus, and do his will, we need to go down to the valley of Ash Wednesday and Lenten season with repentance, fasting, prayers, giving alms, and serving each other. Jesus also came down from the mountain because there was a waiting cross at the foot of the mountain, just out of sight, attending his way to his death. May we follow the cross with Mardi Gras to Lenten and then back again, back to again through shadow valley of death to the other side of life, the resurrection, where the good times, rolling celebrations go on for eternity. And we live in the Mardi Gras without end in God's eternal glory. But today, let us celebrate the image of God in Jesus without the veil on our minds and eyes, proclaiming the gospel that Christ Jesus is the Lord and we are the servants to each other in our ordinary life for Jesus' sake. Amen. And please join me in the prayer. And I want to remind you that there are prayer request cards you use the prayer request cards, and also there is new visitor welcoming card. If you leave your names and your information, contact information, we church will keep you in our prayer. Let us pray together. A God of glory, God of love and healing, and also God who watched God's son's death on the cross and resurrected him. Oh God, sometimes we march on with smiles, laughter, and sometimes we sit under a fig tree or going through dark valleys of our life. But no matter where we are, your mercy and your glory guide us. And especially today, on this threshold day, we look both your epiphany, revealing your light and glory. Also, we look at Lent, your life, teachings, your passion and suffering and death until the resurrection. Thank you, God, for today we look for both ways and we lift up our voices 
celebrating, enjoy, and lift up our hands to you and sing to you. Sing your glory with our bare human eyes. Thank you, God, for this day. And thank you, God, for coming Ash Wednesday and Lenten season. Guide us every step, one step at a time. Your presence, your guidance. Thank you, God. And at this silent moment, we remember people who still don't know your glory in the face of Jesus. We pray for them in this silent moment. Help us, O oh God, we take off the veil, veil from our minds and eyes and see the gospel, witnessing your message, the kingdom of God, that God reigns everywhere, our sorrowful days and our glorious days. In the confidence, we join in the prayer Jesus taught to all of us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please rise as you're able, and we sing the closing hymn, He is Exalted. Today, millions of Americans will watch the Super Bowl football game. There will be parties with abundant food, friendship, and fellowship. At the same time, there will be people worried about staying warm and finding their next meal. Let's join with others around the country as we demonstrate God's love by loving our neighbors through the Super Bowl of caring. It's a simple yet significant act of caring for others. This year, we are collecting for the Northfield Township Food Pantry. 
Feeding the hungry is at the core of their mission. Everything collected goes directly to them. Checks can be made out to Northfield Township Food Pantry. Thanks for supporting this effort and helping those most vulnerable in our community. Let's, Let's continue, continue to, to work to make sure no child goes hungry in our community. Let's, Let's join together to help transform lives. Thank you. Any food items or check, if you write a check, please write it to Northfield Township Food Pantry, that your donation go there directly. And then please, after this worship service, worship celebration, go to the social hall. The celebration is going on. We, as Christians, we live one step at a time, one day at a time, and today is all about celebration. No one goes home without eating and celebrating in the social hall. And Wednesday is Ash Wednesday. Our Ash Wednesday service will be here at seven o'clock with the choir. And then you wanna come to private time and asking, we pray together, come to my office. Wednesday between noon and two o'clock, I will be there, give your ashes and pray with you for your, with your personal prayer concerns. Oh, another. After this all eating um, jambalaya and Mardi Gras food, another service project is that we will make a meal to serve, to bring to you Glenview and Northbrook Youth Service, their program. And it's another sub, uh, service project. If you are willing, please stay and helping cooking that meal. And tomorrow we bring them to the youth service center and serve the meal for them. Offering baskets in the bag, please leave your offerings, ties, and gifts there. Your prayers, presents, gifts, service, and witnesses. Support, carry on our church and the church in the world. Listen, today is for the celebration and Wednesday is for fasting and repent. We live one day at a time, celebrate the glory of God with your friends in this church. Go in peace, amen. <laughs>